Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in today's wonderful tutorial on data science tools, we're trying to see how to work with large and huge data sets. So, what do I mean by large data sets? So, in case your data set is more than 100 megabytes upwards to maybe 1 gigabyte, 2, two gigs, or terabytes, and you're working with it, it can be very, very difficult sometimes when you're trying to work with it on your local system. In the cloud, it may be faster, but in the, on your local system, it can be difficult. So, how do you work about with that issue? So, there are several ways of working with it. So, we have Pandas itself. We have model, we have DAS, we have VICE, and then other methods. These are some of the popular packages that you can use to help make your work easier when you are working with large data sets. So to install any of them, just go to pip install pandas, pip install DAS, or pip install DAS complete, right? To install the entire package of DAS, very, very powerful package. You can also go with pip install VICE, it's another package, then pip install model, which is pandas working on Ray, right? Okay, so that is a basic library that you can work with it. Now let's see the first method. So the first method is not just to use any of these packages but to split them. So you can split your data set and then read them in chunks. So let's see how to do that. So in case you're on working on Linux or Unix based system like Linux or Macintosh, you can just go with split, right? Split already comes with your system. You just go with split dash L, then the number of lines you want to split your big data set, right? Then after that you can just rename them. Or you can split them by bytes, like maybe into 50 kb kilobytes or 15 megabytes or you can split them by maybe digits or you can split them by and then give them a cost of it right or you can split them into chunks by dividing the entire system into chunks of five that is the basic way when you are working on a unit based system so in case you are working on a linus or in, in a non unit based system like windows you can also go with this particular package called CS, csv splitter so let's see how it is so i'll just open it here so this is the csv splitter so i've extracted it here then let's open it and see so when i open it this is how it's going to be right so it's just a simple tool then when you open this particular tool to give you the file name so i'm going to supply my file name for my data set we are using just 100 megabytes right so that's the name of the data set we're using let's call it as 100 megabytes like this right it is just 100 megabytes it's not that huge okay perfect then you just supply the location that you want to Put your output folder so let's put it here as result perfect then i'm going to tell that first row contains column numbers right that is that is true then include head header in each new package so i want to split them into maybe different rules so this is just hundred thousand let's make it ten thousand right or maybe hundred thousand or ten ten thousand so something like this so if i go with execute it's going to start splitting them and give us the number of time so let's check our folder that we are running inside so this is our folder this is the package that is running and this is our folder that we are running inside so you see that it's, it's going to split them into individual chunks that is splitting them into 100 rows in a very 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 nice format right which is quite interesting so with this particular format you can be able to read or do the work that you want to do right so when you open each and every it's going to have the header which is very very interesting so it takes some time to run them perfectly so that is the first method in case you are working on Windows or, or Linux. So let's import it and then let's exit. So now let's see the next method. So then that is in case you are working on Windows. This same thing that we did can be done if you are working on Linux, right? Perfect. Now let's see the next method. So you can also use Node.js, JavaScript to do that. So npm install csv split and then make on that same format. So let's see the next method. So the next method is just to view your file without any packages using the normal default Python stuff. So you're just going to create it open, then the name of the file of the data set as file, then you're just going to preview the entire stuff, right? So you're going to just read the exact line to preview your data set. So that is very very interesting way to know the number of rules and then with this particular method of knowing the number of rules that is inside this particular data set, you can chunk them, you can spread them and you can work on them individually. Then let's see how it is going to be. So I'm going to run it like this. This depends on how fast the system is, right? So this took six seconds, took about what, six seconds, right? For you to read this and give us this 9,200 or oh, 938,000 rules. Very, very interesting. So it's just giving us a preview of this particular part. stuff, right? So that is one of the ways of working with it. Now, since we have a preview, you can need to know what to do with it. How are we going to divide our data set? How are we going to cut them into chunks? Now, let's see the next method. So the next, next method is that. Since we know that this is the number of rows, we can read them in rows, right? Of maybe thousands or in rows of 
hundreds or in different different rows then you can also read them as columns right so let's see how to do that so i'm just going to do the normal pandas to pip install pandas which already installed then import pandas as pd perfect now let's attempt to read our data set that we had first and see how it's going to be so i'm just going to use the normal time then df pd dot read underscore csv then our data set right so big data sets right so that's what i are trying to read so we have big data set one then let's try it and read it and see how long it's going to take it's about 100 megabytes right we can use one terabyte but for this short tutorial yes yes let's use only 100 megabytes so it took about what 8.5 seconds right so this one took 6.17 seconds this took 8.5 seconds so that is one way of reading I'm attempting to read it as a big file so let's try to see let's see whatever you have okay okay so these are data sets it's having all of these things savings and very interesting data sets very nice now let's see how to read the first rules right so we know that it has about this kind of rules so you can just read the first thousand rules the first ten thousand rules let's see how it's going to be it's going to be very simple So time, then df left with df1, then pd dot read underscore csv. Then I'm going to supply the particular data set and have today data set one. Then I can supply the number of rows I want to read. So I can just go with n rows. Then I can supply the value. So let's say I want to read the first thousand rows. So if I'm reading the first thousand rows, it's just going to read and give us 160 milliseconds. Very very interesting. So with the, this particular format, you can read it in a simple way. The very faster way and then work on it do whatever you're doing then apply it on a remaining data set which is very simple so this one takes less time as compared to the reading the entire stuff so this was 8.5 seconds this is 160 milliseconds which is very fast right the other method is that you can also check let's check how many entire ship let's take this let's check the shape of what we have read so far so it's having only 100 rows right instead of the entire 9,000 900 thousand Rules that are supposed to be perfect. Okay, so this is this was supposed to come in anyway. Okay, now let's move on. This was supposed to be here. Perfect. Okay, now let's see the next method. So perfect. So now let's see the amount of memory that is being used by each and every of these rules that we have. So to do that, it's quite simple. Just going to go df one dot info. Then you go to create memory usage. You can set it as True. So if you work on this, it's going to give us the memory that is being used by each and every of them. Go set almost all of them is the same, and this amount that is being used. Right? You can also use a different method. Of, let's try that one. So I'll copy this one from the deep format. Right? So it's going to be this, and set this one to deep. So deep. And then it's going to list it completely for us. So it seems that this is using 397, and this is using 107. But in case you want to check for each and every other column, right? This is just using the info, but you want to check for the actual column, you can, you can just move on to the second method. It's going to be you apply that one not onto the info but onto the column itself. So it's going to be memory usage is equal to true, right? So it can be true, okay? So that this is 80. For the index itself and then 800 for all of these ones right in case you can't read it you can just convert it to megabytes or kilobytes this is how you want to do it let's try the other one for the deep so let's set deep to be to be called true so if you set deep to be called true you'll be able to see it very clear and right? so that index is 80 certificate is 800 8000 and then name of bank is higher right so this by this you can be able to know which column is using more and then use those columns to to read right or to make your selection of what kind of column you want to read so that's the basic idea about it so let's convert this one to byte get you to convert to byte it's going to be the same thing like by let's see 10 1 e let's see 6 right <coughs> Then whether I think this has done. Perfect. So that has converted them to 
but it's so good to see the difference so since that it's too big so let's make it kilobyte thread perfect so 8 kilobyte 80 65 so that's how to do that so you know the columns are being that are taking much and then you do the same things to work select the kind of column that you want to work so let's see how to do that so it's going to be put you the time magic then df2 is going to be pd.read underscore csv then our big data set right big data set then i'm going to apply the columns that we have so it's going to be use course is going to our columns that we have so let's see how it's going to take perfect this is 5.17 seconds right this was this was a uh, 160 milliseconds this was 5.17 seconds that means that it takes longer time when you're reading really columns than when you're reading really rows because this is really a tidy test but just taking only these five columns very interesting so let's check the usage of this one too so here values of the thing that that's weird so five so just just only the five rows right so we can also check with the usage of these rows how much is being used so df2.info then memory usage go to true if i see that now it is giving us totally different because this is reading all of reading all these rules very very well right so these are all the rules that it's reading it's reading the entire rules with this particular stamp there so that is the basic idea about it okay so now let's move on to the next object so the next method is that you're going to you can read the entire stuff into chunks right read the entire is set in chunk so how do you do that so i have already created a simple function so it's going to be just like this so this is the number of chunks you want to read right then you can just create a, an empty data frame then you look through the entire data set that you have pandas give you the option of supplying the chunk size then you do whatever process you want to do so i want to just check it for the total it's deposit which we have to that deposit and check with the total deposit of maybe for the bank that are so i want to check for total deposit that are greater than 10,000 or 100,000, right? So I'll do my calculation, do my processing, then concatenate all of those data sets into one place and then work on that. So let's run it and see, and see how long it's going to take. Perfect. So now it took about 16 minutes to read this entire stuff, right? That means to read it, but it took a very long time to read it, right? Because it was still doing the computation. So now let's see the next method that you can also do. So let's just go with our df.largest banks and then with this dot head you can just check for let's check for the first five then perfect so it's able to work and give us based on this computation that we had it so that's one of the methods of working with it right so this method is it works but it takes time because it's just chunking them just doing the same thing but it's chunking them in memory very very interesting now let's see the next method so the next method is to use modern right so modern is a very powerful nice package that works on ray right so it's pandas running on steroids called ray so first of all let's load the package just go to import modern dot pandas as mpd then it's going to run all this processing right that is the basic stuff it's going to do here so it's going to run it perfectly then let's try and read it a data set so one of the ways is that sometimes when you're working with modern in case you interrupt it it may have problems you just have to restart my kernel so i have to restart the kernel that's why we are starting from one then again i'm just going to load our data set so if i load this data set then in with modern itself it's just going to run take some time that's about 12 seconds as compared to the previous one that we we're using very interesting 12.4 seconds very very fast not that bad it's very faster than the initial one now let's see the next thing we can do with modern so with modern these are all the different packages or different functions you can do with this particular stuff just like pandas right you can do almost all of these things with modern you can do all of these things with modern so the next thing that you can just check for the head right and then you see that it's going to, it's going to give us the head of this data set right this basic stuff memory usage just as we have been doing so if i check for the memory usage such as giving us this stuff right very interesting it's able to load all of these columns and all of these rows perfectly in memory so that's going to work perfect now let's check the next method so the next method is to use that's right so that's a very powerful package that has several other features we have that's data frame that's array and then that's core and then that's distributed so you can just work with it let's see how to work with it so just going to go with import that data frame as dd then let's 
see how to read our file so time then it's going to be df underscore last then dd dot read underscore csv and this is okay as I said, you have this data set too. Let's read and see. Let's see the time it takes to read. Very, very fast, right? So that's very, very fast. So it's able to read the entire stuff for us and it's taking about 268 milliseconds. So let's see some of the things we can do with this. So let's go with PR of our DF plus. So this gives us all of these things. So you can just check on these different functions, right? Let's come back with Very interesting. All of these functions can be done with this particular option. If you want to get information about it, just going to go to the task. Dot info. So if I go with dot info, it's going to run it and then give me some little info about it. Perfect. So that is how to work with it with that. Right? So that dot info to give you the information in case you want to get the describe and also do the same thing of df dot df underscore dask. And describe so we'll go with this it's going to also describe the entire data set for us with this particular option it's not that informative but we did but compute be able to do a lot of things which is which goes with this right and it's a better method of working with and let's move on to the next method so the next method is method six which is using bias so bias is also another powerful tool you can also work with but sometimes there may be issues with the installation package right so just go with this same format you have to work with it now for the method seven this is what we we're talking about So the method 7 just go with this, just import pandas, right? Then you open the file, no matter how long it takes, then you pickle it, right? You commit it from one format of CSV to a pickle format so that by it becomes easier to read. So let's try that one. So I'm just going to read our file. So let's call it as da3, then pd.read, and that's called csv. Then I'll pick this set that we have. So let's read the first one. Right, so this is the data set I have. So to, to take some time to read, take quite some time. And after that, I'm just going to pick all it, right? See it as pickle. Perfect. So it's going to be df3 dot to pickle. And now supplies let's go new data set. Pickle. Right, so this is how to do that. So if I pickle it, it becomes easier and comes faster for me to work with it next time I'm trying to work with it. So this is just a normal raw data set, but in a pickle format, it's going to change the format into, into a format that is easy to read. Right? So let's reload it and check the time to take to read it. So time, then let's go to new df pd.read and let's go CSV. Let's go pickle. Then I'll supply the new data we have. So new pickle. So let's check the time. Perfect. So that is about two seconds, two point seven five seconds, which is very very fast as compared to the previous ones we are doing. Right. So this format makes it easier. So we really can just do anything that you want to do. So pickling improves the speed. So I can just check for this immediate dot head, and then it's going to work. Perfectly, just like the normal study I've been doing, without any issues. You can do whatever you want to do with it. So this is just the first five rows that have been able to read for us in a very nice way. So there are several methods can also work with large data sets. So another one of the methods that you can also read it using the cloud, but you can just load your data set inside the cloud, GCP, AWS, or any of these cloud systems. So thank you for watching this long tutorial. In case you have any question or contribution, you can just put inside the comment section so that, so that everybody can benefit. In case you need help clean your data sets, you can also check the link below. Thank you and stay blessed.